Uh, Self-respect is the beginning of respect for others. I don't have any secret formula, except we have to keep working at it, uh, working with our young people, uh, rejoicing in their good, and celebrating the things they do that are respectful, as well as condemning the things that they do uh, that are disrespectful. We just have to work at it. Thank you, Dr. Lord. His name is, is Lowry, <laughs> not Lowry. Just, we just want to advise we may not be able to get to all questions, so we have until 7.30, and so we'll get to as many questions before then. So if we do shut you off, we do apologize. Yes, um, my question is, do you believe America is uh, living out Dr. King's Speak dream? up a little bit. My question was, do you believe Dr. Uh, America is living out Dr. King's dream? I dream, I think, I again, I refer to my old sermon. Everything has changed, and nothing has changed. Uh, we got a black guy in the White House, beautiful family, and yet we got people trying to bring him down. We got more black police chiefs, and yet we got racial profiling. We got a, a professor at Harvard who's working on DNA to get your African roots, celebrated professor, and you got a police officer who put handcuffs on him in his own house. All he had to do look around the wall, see his pictures, and know he was at home. Everything has changed, and nothing has changed. So I think Dr. King would be ecstatic about the election of Barack Obama. I think he'd be very proud of our, when, when Martin died, we had a, less than 500 black elected officials all over the country. Today we're around 10,000. I met a city councilman here tonight. He said, I'm a city councilman in Rochester. And I said, thank you, sir. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, he's proud of that and I'm proud of that. I'm grateful. So everything has changed. And nothing has changed. And we have to keep working. And unfortunately, the more progress we make, the more we think we don't have to continue to put pressure. But that's not true. Uh, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. We have to keep working at it. Uh, keep pressure. Uh, my wife, my wife had a in our basement and mom we had a work cabinet in the little laundry room and the hinge was loose and she kept saying Joseph that door won't close would you type that I said yes I'm going to get to it baby <laughs> 1992 went by 1992 <laughs> <laughs> and finally uh, one evening I came home I couldn't see her in the kitchen she was in the basement had dinner prepared downstairs soft music playing she had on one of them, <laughs> attractive gowns. We ate dinner, she said, would you like to dance a little bit? I said, I don't care if I do. <laughs> we got up dancing. She led me over to the laundry room. <laughs> she said, would you nail that hinge up there while we were here? <laughs> well, uh, what I hadn't done in two years, I did in two minutes. <laughs> she had to keep the pressure on. We've got to keep the pressure. We've got to keep the pressure on institutions like University of Rochester so that they continue the tough job of seeking out black faculty and black administrators. Got to continue the pressure. Continue to pressure our young people to be respectful. It, it is it, pants on the ground. You look like a fool. Brother, Brother Platt is right. He he was a little shell shocked in Vietnam, and he's he's real. You know he, you know he, 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 his his brain on the ground sometimes. But he <laughs> but he's a cheerful fellow, nice fellow. I hope he gets rich off his song. But we've got to keep pressure. There is no substitute 
for creative pressure. We never would have made the progress we have made without pressure. And that's why I like the letter from the Birmingham jail. Uh, Martin continues to talk about the need for pressure and the need for justice. There's no substitute for justice. So that's all the answer I know to give. Got, I got time for one more question? All right. Thank you, Dr. Rohr, for your wonderful speech tonight. Thank I'm a sophomore you. of the college, and I visited the Dr. King's museum in Atlanta three weeks ago, and I read his story and your story this week. So I have a personal question for you. When, I, when you were young, as I am, as a student of a university or a college, where your courage, where your power, and where your passion came from to support you to believe that we can better the community, can better the country, to believe that we can make a difference in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you get it, you get your courage and your passion from your commitment. And see, I argue that if you discriminate against me because I'm dirty, that's my fault. I ought to clean up. If you discriminate against me because I'm ignorant, my fault. I don't know what's going down. If you discriminate against me because I'm loud and uncool, it's my fault. I ought to know when to whisper. I ought to know when to shout. But if you discriminate against me because I'm black, you have to take that up with God. He made me black. There's nothing I want or can do about it. So that means that the whole issue of race relations is a moral, spiritual, ethical, religious issue. And if you love the law, you know, if you if you if you committed to those principles of the faith, that love is stronger than hatred, and love is stronger than charity. If you love and you're committed to that, then you find the strength. God will give you the strength. You know, God will inspire you. God will move you. My daddy had some hedges along the driveway of our house. And I used to try to jump them. <laughs> I couldn't jump them. And I'd make little holes in the hedges. And my daddy would whoop me. But I couldn't jump the hedges. And the lady named Miss Flippo down the street brought her cow up to feed in a vacant lot next door on the grass and weeds. And I used to go out there and get a red handkerchief and pretend I was a bullfighter and uh, put him in front of the old cow. But the cow was tied to a rope. <laughs> One day he broke the rope. I cleaned the hedges by two. My motivation, help me. If you get mixed up with God, give your life to the Lord. I declare you can find strength that you never knew you had. You can find courage that you never knew you had. You can have people call you dirty name and don't retaliate. You can go on and love instead of hate because love is stronger than hate. But you've got to get that commitment to the love and you can find the power to move out into territory you didn't think you could handle. Thank you so much for letting me come to you. Thank you, Dr. Lowry. Thank you. This is the University of Rochester.